So why would he forbid them to contact spirits if they didn't actually exist? The restriction doesn't make sense unless there's something to be restricted from. Hello, I'm Melissa Doherty here for crossexamined.org. So, ghosts, spirits, fun. Let's talk about this today. In my background as a New Ager, ghosts or spirits were something that absolutely fascinated me. Pretty much any contact with the spirit world, whether it was positive or negative, gave me a rush because it gave me a glimpse of something beyond the physical and made me feel powerful and important. We sometimes hear stories of people who ghost hunt, people who claim to talk to spirits through psychic abilities, and many others who claim to have experiences with spirits. Though I do have to say that some of these stories are sensationalized, and supposed phenomena can be easily debunked and discarded after further examination. Sometimes it's natural phenomena that is inflated into supernatural events, and other times it's our imaginations. Sometimes there are some strong skeptics and materialists that say that there's zero evidence for any sort of ghost-like or spiritual activity of any kind, but what about if it's none of these things? In the rare instance that someone does actually see a spirit of someone who's departed, a spirit in general, or have a supernatural event that they simply can't find a natural explanation for, then in the Christian worldview, what exactly is it that they're seeing? Most people believe that they're literally the departed spirits of those who have passed on, or in some cases, we have people purposely seeking out spirits of any sort through occult practices. Either way, as an ex-New Ager, having experienced some of this, I can say that not all of what I experienced was in my imagination. There's not a natural explanation for plates or dresser drawers throwing themselves across the room. <laughs> Do you know of any? Because I don't. I mean, many other people have experienced similar things. So what's going on? First, for some biblical insight on this, we find that God forbids contact with spirits. He clearly forbids consulting mediums or spiritists. These activities are forbidden in several places, including Leviticus 19, Deuteronomy 18, Chronicles 10, and Isaiah 8, 19-20. Consulting the dead, a practice called necromancy, usually was done for purposes of divination and seeking the advice of pagan gods. God considers consulting mediums and spiritists as spiritual adultery. Why would he forbid such things when so many other beliefs welcome this? This is yet another thing that makes Yahweh unique and set apart from all others. Now, this is actually a fascinating restriction if you think about it. Why would God command them not to do something that they couldn't do anyway? In other words, he's not saying something like that they're forbidden from visiting the city of Oz. That would be silly because that doesn't exist. So why would he forbid them to contact spirits if they didn't actually exist? The restriction doesn't make sense unless there's something to be restricted from. The question is, who or what are they then? So here's my logic on this. According to the Christian worldview, and arguably millions of other people just by experience, there are spirits. There's a supernatural world out there. To make it basic, in the Bible, there are two categories, those who obey God and those who don't. The spirits that obey God, such as angels, archangels, uh, seraphim, cherubim, and if your soul belongs to God as a child of God, a believer in Jesus Christ, then the spirits of the believers, the saints, as well. Then there are spirits that don't obey God and hate us, like Satan and his legion of demons. Demons are a thing, and they want to interfere with everything we do. But scripture doesn't always explain that these beings look deceiving or even scary. In fact, they're probably very lovely. An infamous scripture about this is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 14, about how the enemy can disguise himself as something that looks enticing and good, an angel of light. So the logic goes that God has completely prohibited contact with spirits to those who are living. The ones that obey God won't break this rule. And Jesus' story of the rich man and Lazarus in Luke 16 implies that the dead in general cannot contact the living. 
It doesn't matter if they were believers or not. So considering this, if a human tries to contact a spirit or if a spirit tries to make contact with us, out of the two categories we have to choose from, which side do you think that spirit is on then? Which side do you think is going to obey God and which side isn't? A spirit that obeys God will not make contact with us. When people open spiritual doors like this, they're hard to close. These beings can actually seem kind and loving, but it's a false and deceptive design made to entice you away from the one true God. He warns against this for a reason, and it's to keep us from spiritual deceit. If you're interested in learning more about me and my ministry and this subject, you can find a lot more detailed information on this topic by visiting my YouTube channel and by visiting crossexamined.org.